Dom is standing by with Team Envy's victorious AD Carey. All righty. Well, uh, thank you so much, gentlemen. Good cast on the day. I am joined by Hakuho. Uh, Lod, I'm sorry. I'm completely brain farting this one. I was listening to your exciting story about the Siver and J4, and I was so enraptured by it. Uh, do you think you can share that back at home with the uh, folks at home? Yeah, I mean, before when I played Siver and to raise Jarvan, I just like got completely destroyed. He literally just one shot me repeatedly. So uh, throughout the entire series, we were like first picking and early picking Siver. And the entire time I was telling my team, like, they're going to play Jarvan. You guys got to build a comp around me. They're going to play Jarvan. I was like super scared. But when they picked in the third game, like, we, we seemed to be playing super clean. And we knew that as long as basically like the Jarvan didn't get fed or get early kills, like, it wasn't going to be a problem. It's just like a cheesy pick. If it snowballs, it snowballs. If it doesn't, it does nothing. So. I conquered my greatest fear today. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely were able to see that coming from a mile away. When he tried to hop over the wall and you were like, no, exhaust, healed, not even going to flash away. That was pretty styling. Uh, but a lot, of course, you just said it yourself. Eight defeats in a, in a row for Envy. And now finally your first return win. Starting the climb again? I would say so. Like, you know, even though we might have had like a bit of an easier schedule in the first couple weeks, we were playing really well as a team. But I guess after like pretty much the loss after Immortals, like for a couple of weeks, we were in a bit of a slump. We were having a lot of problems and we couldn't seem to figure it out. But I think this is like just the victory we needed. You know, Apex isn't like the top team or anything, but just finally getting a win under our belt feels really good and gives us a lot more confidence. So I think, you know, we can return to like the form that we had before and even better. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to it. And of course, next week you're playing against Cloud9 and TSM. You're going to need that confidence. Are you prepared? Got any thoughts? Uh, we might not be like too prepared yet, but we're just gonna like practice super hard this week. Uh, recently things have just been getting a bit better for us overall, so I think we're gonna have a good environment to practice in, and we're just gonna do our best for next week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Lod, thank you so much. Congratulations on the victory. We're gonna go ahead and send it over to the analyst to break that down. Thank you very much, Dom. Envy finding a much needed match victory here, coming in at the end of week seven in order to keep their playoff hopes alive. Uh, against a team that is very close to them in the standings. I know we've hit that point a lot, but we're going to hammer at home how important it is to be taking these matches against teams that are particularly close to you in the standings. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, a very close series in a sense where most of the early games weren't that explosive. You usually saw it coming in that were like 2-3, two 2-2 to three, two to two at different points in the game. So uh, they were definitely slower games, which is kind of what you expect to see out of Envy. And then to have it kind of just blow open eventually at that uh, that fight in the middle of the game, which is kind of how this series went. It's, it's not the best sign for Envy, even though it's nice to finally pick right. up a win. But you would hope to see more uh, initiative in the early game. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, this is the first step in coming back from a four-match slide. Right, they had lost the previous four matches before that, so just kind of breaking that. Whether it was the cleanest yeah. and best batch, and all right, well, we broke that loss streak. Now let's see if we can build from here. Well, it's quite obviously a team that's really based on the momentum because the first time that they were doing really well was very unexpected. Yeah. They didn't think that they were going to be doing so well. A new roster, they're actually expecting losses. They get off to a really high start, a little bit maybe hot headed because you're getting all the success that isn't necessarily warranted towards the actual amount of practice that you put in. Then teams start getting better, you start dropping, and now it's like time to pick it back up, and it seems like that's what they're trying to do. A lot seems rather confident that it's the time to turn things around and with a couple more weeks, make it to playoffs. Now diving into this third game itself, we had some questions about how either team would adjust going into game three, in particular Apex, since they were the ones who just similarly to yesterday, won game one, kind of got beat pretty hard in game two. They decide to go for that, uh, that Jarvan for Ray in the top lane. So once again, focusing a lot on him being the way to win the game, and it doesn't pan out for him. Well, the, Jar the, the Jarvan's all right, but the Sivir, you let the Sivir be such a priority over, over and over, and now he gets first picked in the final game and has such an instrumental role for Envy. The wave clear, the ability to make everybody move faster into the back line is so powerful, especially when you combo with the likes of the... Victor, the Nar, and the Olaf is just brutal. And and the thing too is it's not just that. It's like the the Apex comp doesn't have any tankiness really. So like you have to play so well to avoid getting blown up by pretty much any position that they have. Like mm -hmm. all their things are going to be squishy. I guess Elise might get a little tanky with like a Rylai's pickup, but even then it's it's really not much. So especially versus a, a Victor who can just like right, you're dead. <laughs> Late game like it's so hard to play against that. So I think 
they kind of dug themselves a hole where if they don't snowball early Apex, and that's not really how the series was going exactly. overall, it's, it's not a great comp in that sense. Yeah, proof's in the pudding. Ten minutes into the game, we see trades two for two, right? We're not seeing one-sided fights for Apex when they did need those one-sided fights. We're seeing pretty even trades between the two teams. Right, and this, this is going to be actually pretty well played by Keen. Uh, they catch Shrimp out here, Envy, they, they chase him down. And then he gets the repel off. Keen comes in, drops a lot of damage. Victor puts the gravity field behind him, and Keen actually plays aggressively and goes right to where Ray is. Uh, and then the backside, Seraph's kind of trying to chase around for kills, gets caught off, and flashes over the wall into a special. I think he's able to pick him up, but now he's in the middle of all of uh, Apex. And this could have been so well if had he been able to proc that Mega Knight just a tiny just little bit. Yeah, was unable to get that ulti off. And you know, it's a really good idea by Envy. They're hiding in the brush, waiting to pick off. Elise, and to be honest, they kind of botched it a little bit because the pillar wasn't on the wrong side. Had the mm -hmm. pillar blocked the Elise path of retreat, maybe could have been cleaner, buy a little bit more time, get the Nari, and get a really nice fight going. Right, what well, was a two for two could have gone better for Envy, so still a good stab for them in terms of making that play because the upside was even higher than what it ended up exactly. turning right. out it's, it's to be. It's a buff invade, you want that to happen, but it's it wasn't, you know played perfectly. I think it was played pretty well also on the side of Apex, right. but the fact that they're the ones making the action happen when, you know, Apex is the one who kind of has that more snowball comp is not great. Right, so that's where things are breaking even, but then we fast forward 22 minutes into the game, Apex in, an, in, in a siege attempt here, uh, kind of overextending for themselves, getting chased down by Envy. And this already is going to go poorly for Apex. When you have your assassin driver and having to burn his combo to get out of the fight, you know you've lost the fight. And immediately the chase from the Nara is just so powerful. The Rylai's on the Victor is going to do so much work here. With the Caitlyn having no summoners after that, it's just really difficult to get out of that situation. And what Apex should have done, just recognize you've lost a fight, back away with what you've been able to, sort of, to right. keep alive. And then they try to defend with not even a defense. They try to aggress onto five people. This is a 3v5 engagement. For the time that Ray goes in, it's legitimately a, five, a 1v5. And the zoning uh, ult the w. gravity field from Ooh. Victor gets a two-man stun. Easy easy capitalize onto two kills, which nets an inhibitor, and that's basically spells game over for Apex after that. Right, I mean, there's no way to really come out ahead if, if you're Apex. They're like, oh, maybe you Jarvan, like, one-shot. Yeah, like, you can maybe one-shot the Sivir if, if the cast is able to get in range, and the, the, the Sivir doesn't do anything to react to it, but then you're still versing four other people who are, who are going to do plenty of damage to, to kill you. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that sink or swim Jarvan top lane that we've seen, you know, both this split and in previous splits. If he gets ahead, he can absolutely take over a game, be 10 and 0, and you are one shotting the AD carry this time around. That's not the case. So Envy is given the allowances to actually move around in team fights, reposition their short range ADC successfully. Uh, you know, I think the, the the larger thing here that I want to talk about now, well, actually, player of the game. Let's hit that first, and then I'll move on to the macro stuff. Lod's going to pick that up. Having that really, uh, you know, that huge team fight damage as well as the kill participation, being that carry repositioning, and avoiding getting popped, because there is something to be said for him playing a role in that. A uh, Sivir, that's all, all you got to say. He <laughs> played Sivir. No, I think you guys uh, suck. No, I mean the, the the ability that Sivir gives this team. Like you saw that yeah. example, they basically chased all the way from their mid outer up to the other team's mid inner. That's almost an entire lane that Sivir just gives them the speed advantage where the other team can't realistically. Well, another way that I like to look at Sivir and how strong she is is the spell shield. That ability right. is so overrated, and if you underrated, underrated. Sorry. And if you put it into a scenario... <laughs> Crumbs just really hates this. Summer, if you put it so. into a scenario where, let's say you're against, so say, a, a champion, that a mid laner that has 15,000 gold worth in the bank, mm -hmm. that laser is going to be a 15,000 gold laser that just gets completely nullified right. by one spell that you can level at level one. In that replay, we see Cataclysm get, get blocked by the Sivir Spell Shield. So again, yeah, utilizing that skill properly is what can be the the make or break in a fight in terms of uh, living or dying. But now I want it. Now I want to push forward in terms of that overall kind of league picture when it comes to these two teams. As we mentioned, Envy was on a four match loss streak coming into this game. Apex now having lost the last six, they are really struggling. Looking ahead though at both of these teams' schedules next week, Envy's up against TSM and Cloud9. That's going to be a tough week. On the other side, Apex is against Fox and Immortals. So maybe one, uh, you know assumed victory against Fox, but then a big matchup against Immortals as well. So if we're looking for Apex to turn things around anywhere, it would be in that first matchup against Fox. I think both these teams have to realistically look for 1-1s. It's You can't be going into this week saying, oh, we're going to prepare and try to beat TSM, or we're going to try to beat Immortals. Like It's already too far. The split's about to be over. You guys really need to focus on the matches that 
are more realistic to be able to win. So mm -hmm. against Fox, against Cloud9, and just put all the eggs in that basket. Especially Cloud9, we've they struggled a lot this week. Even though they came away uh, one and one overall, it really was not convincing. It wasn't like those one and ones were like, oh, that was a well played series. It was like game one they lost, game two they should have lost, and right. it was a seven minute ace. Uh, and then, you know, they kind of come back through that series. And then this one against CLG, they, they ultimately lost after a very kind of controlled game three from CLG where it looks like C9 is really struggling to get anything going of their own in the mid portion of the game. Now, let me ask you, so how do you exactly see Envy matching up against the C9 that we've seen most recently? Given that Envy typically, as the ones that we've seen, have slightly shorter or rather longer game times and less action early. I would say that's actually good for Envy in a sense because you don't have oh, to... Right as I ask you that question, I got to cut you off because, <laughs> you because I've got the other stream joining us. We can get back to it. Go I'm, away. Let me tell I'm still going to ask you the question. I'm still going to ask yeah, you the yeah, question. Okay. But right as I ask it, I cut you off because we're welcoming our viewers from NALCS1 where TSM pulled off the 2-0 victory over Team Liquid. We will get into that discussion at, right after we close out this point on Team Envy, looking ahead at their match schedule next week, talking specifically about how they might match up against Cloud nine seeing as how they just got a 2-1 victory over apex now jump off <laughs> thank you james <laughs> uh i was just saying that the uh, games that c9 are playing they often don't look very well coordinated or like they have a really good idea of what they want to do in the mid and late game portions and since envy tend to play slower early games where like the most you're seeing is like a blue invade two for two or something like that that's how a lot of these went down uh, i think you might see slower longer games and assuming c9 continues to struggle in those later portions it might favor envy all right, so that's their way to victory in that or in their series next week. But for now, let's turn our attention back over.